Okay, here we are doing an approximate integration problem. I've, um, I've picked one that's, I think, fairly representative of what you might expect. We're going to do this three different methods, trapezoid rule, midpoint rule, and Simpson's rule. All right? And uh, if you think about this function, sine of x squared, we're doing this for a fairly small interval co close to zero. And we have an identity that says that when x is small, the sine of x is equal to x. Okay? Very, very close to it. So we should not be surprised that this looks sort of parabolic uh, for the beginning of this function. After you get larger x, it starts to wiggle, wiggle up and down. So this basic function is going in a parabolic nature. When we're doing the trapezoid rule, we're really joining endpoints of our subsections. We're told we have four subsections in this case. And uh, we can find what our delta x is by just doing the upper bound minus the lower bound divided by 4. That'll give us our delta x. The 4 comes from the fact that we have four subsections. So in this case, the width of this part here is just 1 eighth. Makes sense, because four of those need to add up to 1 half. All right? Well, uh, the trapezoid rule is pretty straightforward. We've got this simple pattern. This is always 2. And uh, that comes from the fact that we are averaging the uh, beginning and end uh, bases they're called, the parallel sides of a trapezoid. And so we always just find those function values and then average them. Then uh, the delta x will change depending on the problem. But it always has this pattern where your first end point, where you start, your lower bound, is going to, be, uh, a co is going to have a coefficient of 1. And then we're counting each of these interior function values twice because they're the beginning and the end of uh, each trapezoid as we go across. So 2 and 2 and 2 and then we get to the end and it's just got a coefficient of 1. All right. So we plug in f of 0 which is 0 and we evaluate it. Then we plug in f of 1 eighth which is right here and we evaluate that but we multiply it by 2. And then we do f of 1 fourth and we multiply that by 2. All right. So I've done that on the calculator here and uh, hopefully it'll show up. So I did the sine of 0 squared plus 2 times the sine of 1 eighth is 0.125 squared and so on. So I've typed that all in very carefully. I made sure I got the 2's out in front where I needed and there's an invisible 1 coefficient there, 0.5 squared at the end. When I add those all up I get 0.683895 and then I multiply by 1 16th, or in this case I just divided by 16 and I got my approximation. So the area under this curve is approximately 0 0.0427, so not very much. Then midpoint rule, similar, but here I've drawn the rectangles because to find the midpoint we just will average our two interval uh, boundaries. So you can see that it's 1 16th between 0 and 1 8th. Halfway between 1 8th and 1 4th is 3 16ths. Simple fraction math. Halfway between 1 4th and 3 8ths is 5 16ths and 7 16ths. So that's where these values come for the midpoint rule. All right. So I've got them there. F of 1 16th, that's just going to be the sine of 1 16th squared. And this will be the sine of 3 16ths squared. When you do all that up and add it all up, and then you multiply that by your delta x 1 eighth, in this case you get an approximate value of 0 0.04085. So very close to our earlier value, slightly less. Simpson's rule is quite interesting. You can check out the derivation. Uh, it's based on finding parabolas that um, approximate each of the subintervals. So this has this coefficient pattern you need to learn, which goes 1, 4, 2, 4, 2, 4, 2, 4, 2, 4, 2, 4, 2, 4, until the end. And it always ends in a 1, and it ends in a 4, 1. And that will work out if you have an even number of intervals every time. So uh, with just one interval, it would go, or with uh, two intervals, it would go 1, 4, 1. With three, it would go, uh, with four, rather, it would go 1, 4, 2, 4, 1. Okay, well that's kind of what's happening in our case here. It's going 1, 4, 2, 4, 1. And the function values are back to our boundaries that we had in the first part of this. 0, 1 8, 1 4, 3 8, and 1 half. And you 
follow that pattern, you evaluate the function, you get the coefficients correct, you plug that all in, and then we multiply that by delta x over 3, which in our case is 1 8th divided by 3, which is 1 24th, and when you do that, you get a total of 0 0.041478. All right, so very close. You can see these approximations. Okay, there are ways of calculating the error for these. Um, so uh, I would invite you to look that up in our text. Uh, we'll do that in another problem. Thanks.